Two years ago, he was the most improved player in the NBA. He is a three-time All-Star. He finished third in this year's MVP balloting. He was All-NBA second team. He is one of the best in the NBA, Jermaine O'Neal. Два Унила, да, о котором ты говорил. Да, вот единственный, наверное, э, ну, не то чтобы недостаток, а вот то, что вот Андерсон при всех своих талантах разыгрывающего именно снайперскими качествами не обладает. Лидер на Джермейна Унила. Унил красивый очень. Обыграл и Хороса, и Коби пытался там на подстраховке сыграть. Рик Карла, зато как Детройт в оборону, в атаке. Джермейн Унил. Против него Мэллоу. Второй раз подряд Джермейн. Активная защита у Лейкер. Унил. Пытались ему мешать. Энтони Джонсон опять в игре. Свободный бросок у Нила 45-58, минус 13. Ну. Game one of our NBA Friday doubleheader starts at Consigo Fieldhouse in downtown Indianapolis, where the Pacers host the Detroit Pistons. Jermaine O'Neal, averaging over 20 points a game, has led Indiana to the top record in the Eastern Conference to this point at 19 and 7. But he'll be defended by Ben Wallace, one of the top defenders, not only in the Eastern Conference, but the entire NBA. Indiana shoots 43% from the field. The Pistons 420. This is the box that Jermaine O'Neal wants to play on, wants to get to that inside move. Over Okur, and still the Pacers and the Pistons have yet to miss. Surprising with the depth that they do have. Tayshawn Prince leaves it for Wallace. Phillips, and now it's Hamilton off the drive. It's blocked by O'Neal. And the ball is out of bounds. It goes the other way. The Pacers have it. Larry Brown is arguing that the ball should belong to the Pistons here. Trapped against the board by an outstanding shot blocker. Jermaine O'Neal has really improved his defense as well as his ability to pass out of the double team. Jermaine O'Neal, third best in the league in that regard. Detroit working on a run of seven straight. The Pacers have it in play. Anderson finding Miller. Hamilton closes out on him. Jermaine O'Neal stops that seven-point run. Did it trying to get out of the way on that breakaway layup. Jim? Okay, Jim. So Bob Delaney and Kevin Fear will work the game in uh, sort of a throwback fashion here, Bill Walton. Back in the days, we had two referees work an NBA game. Indiana after the Detroit turnover. Needing two or three in the worst way. O'Neal the rebound. Larry Brown cannot be happy with the defensive rebounding. Where's Ben Wallace? Good defense rip. Hamilton away from the ball on Reggie Miller. Our test leaves it for Harrington, who powers up in a crowd, and O'Neal on the tip in. Ten points for O'Neal tonight, six in the second quarter, as the Pacers are chipping away at that Detroit lead. Clearly the best big man in the Eastern Conference, having yet another All-Star year, forcing Larry Brown, celebrating his 1300th victory the other night. The big game against Chicago, forced to take a timeout. You've got to be able to get the job done at the defensive backboard here with Jermaine O'Neal and Al Harrington just overpowering guys. Larry Brown has to come quickly back with Ben Wallace. Chambers and Brewer is one of those guys who can get a team into an up-tempo game. Not very good in the half-court set, but open court, watch out. Detroit, 59% shooting in the first half, and O'Neal with the first basket of the second half. 12 points for Jermaine O'Neal. I don't see Kenny Anderson sitting on the bench over there for the Pacers, so that's right. not a good sign. He has been very steady for Rick Carlisle. Wallace, nothing doing, Foster the rebound. Detroit has turned it over six times in the quarter. O'Neal. Jermaine O'Neal has brought Indiana to within three. Crozier on to Johnson. O'Neal finds Crozier for the jam, and the Pacers are back to within seven. 
and they have got that tonight as the numbers have been staggering. Detroit's backcourt has contributed 28 points to Indiana's just six. That's O'Neal with the two-hand dunk, and O'Neal has 17. Indiana within eight. Seven attempts and six of those have gone down. This is our test against Prince. Out to Crozier. Takes up slack. Feeds O'Neal. No fouls taken. Indiana's going to win it. Reggie Miller throws ahead to Crozier with two seconds left. And the Pacers come back in the fourth quarter after trailing by nine. Starting the fourth, Indiana wins it 80-75. to Their second win head-to-head -head against Detroit this year after beating the Pistons at Detroit opening night. And now let's go to Jim Gray standing by with Jermaine O'Neal. All right, 19 points, 11 rebounds for Jermaine. Jermaine, you told me at halftime there was a lack of effort by your team. What was it that you saw? We just didn't have that same energy uh, that we normally have. Like I said, we've been playing in the phone the last uh, week and a half. You know, we've lost some, some games we shouldn't have definitely lost. And in the first half, we was well on our way to doing the same, the same thing. But we got together as a team. The players are uh, really recognize uh, what the problem was. I think the second half, we came out with a lot more effort. You guys scored 19 points in the first, 14 in the second, and the third, and then 33 in the fourth. What changed the tempo and ignited this team in the fourth quarter? Well, we're, we're a defensive team. You know, um, we're really good when we play good defense and get out into transition offense. Uh, when we can do that, we tend to wear teams down. I think we wore Detroit down in the fourth quarter with our good defense and then push the ball up on offense. Jermaine, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Jermaine O'Neal may not yet be the best player in the NBA, but he's playing like the best in the league right now. Eight straight double-doubles have led the Pacers to five straight wins. Number seven looks to erase some bad memories against Orlando tonight. They gave up 112 points to the same Miami team one game ago that the Pacers held for 65. O'Neal being guarded by the clerk. By himself. And that's, just a, that's a foul <laughs> waiting to happen. I mean, Jermaine was looking around, kind of watching to see what else was going to happen, realizing nobody's coming to help. I can go. Wait a second here. <laughs> What's wrong with this yeah, picture? Uh, and thought he was going to play with Grant Hill, and he's never been able to do that, so he's had to carry all of the burden. Jermaine O'Neal walking inside. Strickland now back in, the veteran uh, free agent uh, just signing at the end of November. O'Neal gets into a spot. Changes for Rick Carlisle. Fred Jones is in, Al Harrington, and the first time for Anthony Johnson in the last five games. Resting that abdominal strain, and Jermaine O'Neal, his reign's getting further from the basket, and he's already in double figures with ten points. Five seconds to shoot. Arquette steps back, there it is, and O'Neal rips it down and hits. Nice job being strong with the ball. Good to see Jermaine O'Neal with that bad ankle. Didn't show any signs of it on that play. We'll have a timeout. Pacers once up by 16. It's slashed in half. Mike Vanderjet joining us tonight here, guys. We'll go back over to you. Two, huh? Uh, he certainly. I mean, we got somebody from the guard. But he'd be shooting the three, right? <laughs> no question. Right? No question. Gets the three, it up. Gets the three on the football field. And right here, Jermaine O'Neal goes upstairs. How about the quick read by Tinsley to get it up to the rim? Pacers now get the lead back up to a dozen. Tracy McGrady remains on the floor after his uh, second quarter eruption. Cooling down a bit now with our test on him. Gooden rejected by O'Neal. Twisting, turning. And for Reggie Miller, that uh, just kind of gave him the perfect shot. And that was the play before. 58-43, Indiana. Oh. Harrington is there with the finish. We may want to watch it on television, because this in person is not going the way he would like it to right here. Right in the hands of Bogans, O'Neal. They said the ball was coming down, so Keith Bogans, who is a very active young player, and uh, for that hustle, will get two. University of Kentucky graduate has always been active. You'll see he take that one. It is coming down. O'Neal coming from under the basket. Reggie, face it. Again. Oh, on the left. And it turns out to be a pass to Jermaine O'Neal. 
O'Neal buries another one, and right now the Magic have to feel as if they are six feet under. And Johnny Davis calls the timeout. Two and a half to go. The Pacers, 62. The Magic, 45. Reggie Miller already with seven assists. It's a rarity for Foster uh, getting into double figures in points. Hunter, O'Neal may have gotten a piece of that one with the rookie Keith Bogans who provides a little more toughness and defense. And a little more athletic ability. Pacers have got to get going. Shot clock is going down out of the zone. O'Neal, oh yes, nice field goal, 23 points. Pacers have 10 seconds to work with. Johnson, Jones, who fires down the lane and sets up O'Neal for the emphatic finish. Jones goes through the rim hard, the defense comes to him, and he was still able to get through somehow to get it to Jermaine O'Neal, who really finished strong. Strictly. That's not his shot. I mean, he made it. He made a couple, but well, that's not his first shot either. No. Well, out, of his, out of his range, he took a two-footer. But looks to get the assist. O'Neal wipes that off the scoreboard. Stirring around, McGrady, his body's all over him. And Reggie Miller goes upstairs along with O'Neal. Pacers really scrapping even against one another. Reggie Miller, 11 points. He also has a season high, 8 assists. And Miller with the assists and Tinsley with the threes tonight. Those Pacers trading places. Rick Carlisle is standing next to Tracy McGrady, and Tracy was going to take the ball out as the Pacers steal it, and our test goes down. So Tracy reaches around Rick Carlisle. And with five seconds left in the game, the clerk scores his first field goal of the night. The main streak of eight consecutive double-doubles was foiled by his teammate, Jeff Foster, who just out-hustled him to that last board at the other end of the floor. But Jermaine with 25 points, nine rebounds. And tonight that road team, the Indiana Pacers, as they visit the Mavericks. Good evening, everyone. Along with Bill Walton, Mike Breen on hand, Michelle Tafoya will join us shortly. This is certainly a very difficult place to play as the Mavericks have won 16 of 18 at home. But you've got the best road team in the NBA and the Indiana Pacers, led by Jermaine O'Neal, who is simply the best center in the Eastern Conference. Mike, something's got to give here because this game comes down to the battle of the soul of the NBA here. The up and down tempo of the Dallas Mavericks versus Jermaine O'Neal and the Indiana Pacers pounded inside. Jermaine O'Neal has been red hot. He's the Eastern conference player of the month 11 times the last 11 games 10 double doubles this guy's role and his inside presence will be a major problem for don nelson it's far too early to call it embarrassing it's only three and a half minutes in they haven't scored and they still haven't scored foster one of the premier offensive rebounders in the game great dish from ron artest and finally bill walton feels relieved how about what great ball the detroit pistons are playing right now our test off the mark, O'Neal, the offensive rebound, and it's fouled by Jamison, who just checked in. So, Jermaine O'Neal, who's getting to the line quite a bit recently, will shoot two. Games, all of their victories, they've had at least six threes made in each of those games. You know what, both during this, during this winning streak for them, you see the offensive rebounds, and Foster has the majority of those. They're getting to the line 28 times a game. That is a terrific number. That's that ability of our test and O'Neal to pound it inside. Back to the three-point story, though. Right now, Indiana 0 for 4 on the night. Let's go to Michelle Tafoya. Well, Jermaine O'Neal, I spoke to him before the game. He rolled his left ankle in the game Wednesday night and did not practice yesterday. It's taped up. He got treatment on it today. He says he's feeling a lot better. But look for that to be perhaps a factor in the way he plays tonight, guys. He has had such a terrific season, gets better and better. Rick Carlisle says what he couldn't believe is a guy at 25 years old, he takes over this team this year, the level of maturity and his knowledge of the league. Now he's 25, but this is his eighth year. And all that talent has slowed him down, grinding it out. Kind of hard to argue, though, when you're 27 and 10, have the best record in the league. Uh, my vote's with Carlisle right now, Bill. And so Neil knocks that one down. By the way, that last foul on Indiana was Foster's fourth. Miller. O'Neal usually doesn't shoot from that far out. Uh, it's a done. It's called face. Jermaine O'Neal playing a very conservative game. Saddler with the three fouls, a couple of them. 
Very silly early on. O'Neal. Yeah, that's normal, his range, 15 to 17. You don't see him come out to 20, but he's developing his range on a more consistent basis. What a difference it makes now. Dallas just playing some defense, getting their hands on deflections. Finley that time. As soon as Sean Bradley comes in, the game is changed. Jamison blocked by O'Neal. Crowd wanted a foul, but Jamison just forced that. He initiated that contact. Nash the running start. Still plenty of time, over seven minutes remaining, but Pacers lead by eight. Bad pass. And I think the crafty word I used earlier applies there. <laughs> Five on the shot clock. O'Neal against Nowitzki. Has to put it up. And puts it in. The shot clock expires. And the lead back up to 13, equaling the largest of the game. Ron Artest, air ball. Nowitzki, meanwhile, has missed his last 10 shots from the field. Nash, beautiful pass. Blocked by O'Neal. Oh, again, it looked like Jamison was going to have a beautiful reverse layup. The crowd wanted a foul. O'Neal inside, nice. extra pass, and the Pacers dominating here in Dallas. Don Nelson's seen enough. The deep presence of mind, the patience waiting. That's a great block. That's not a foul. No, he, it, he, he hit the ball first. Oh. And it won't go. Delk comes out of the pack. Walker is ahead down the other end. Walker blocked by O'Neal. Jermaine O'Neal does it again. That's a terrible Dang. pass. So dangerous. <laughs> and a foul on Nowitzki. So O'Neal will shoot two free throws as Nowitzki picks up the first one. Now O'Neal to the line. O'Neal two for two from the free throw line tonight. He's got three block shots. Jermaine O'Neal having a terrific season. Fourth in the NBA in blocks. Eighth in the NBA in rebounds. Twelfth in scoring. And while everybody loves to say that playing in the summertime on the U.S. national team is a bad thing, I think it really helped Jermaine O'Neal. I think it made him aware of just how special he is. Learning from guys like a Tim Duncan. And so what it takes in terms of the hard work, the discipline, the dedication, and the mental analysis. We've seen him take his game to an unprecedented level, Jermaine O'Neal. It's the second for him. Most impressive thing to me about Indiana's performance, Nowitzki, not even close, has been the defense and the team game. To say nothing of the intelligent approach to how they're going to play and what's going to win for them. And the swagger that they have developed on the road. O'Neal just stands there and knocks it down, and that will pretty much do it. Lead up to 12 as we approach a minute remaining. Miller has to put well, didn't have to put it up. There's eight on the shot clock. Who was it that at the start of this game said that oh, O'Neal, that's his fourth block. He hit it before it hit the backboard. But Indiana's certainly getting it done as they'll win their seventh straight overall, fourth straight on the road. They'll improve to 28 and 10 overall. And how about this 14 and 6 on the road? A great road performance tonight from Ron Artest and the Indiana Pacers. By the numbers, they showed tonight why they are the NBA's best team. The Spurs coming off the big win over the Hornets by 10. The Pacers literally ran Dallas out of their own gym last night. An impressive road win. As a result, that sets my partner up for the four keys to victory. Yeah, you know Indiana has to be feeling a ton of confidence right now. In order for the Spurs to win, they've got to dominate the inside game. Jermaine O'Neal, again, the best big man in the East. And, of course, they have Foster there on the inside. And Al Harrington will come off the bench. Out with the injury. Parker misses on the jumper. Rebound to O'Neal. He gives to Tinsley. Pacers bring it up with a three-point deficit facing him. Tinsley nearly dribbled it out of bounds. O'Neal got it over Ori. That's the shot he has to hit to get on the board. That's a tough shot for a big man to take. Bringing it up here. Averaging seven points a game. Had two points against Dallas last night. Three the game before. And then missed the previous four with an injury. Abdominal strain. Now O'Neal says he's got the touch and hits the jumper. Oh, he looks like he's content with shooting that outside jumper. Which is, again, just fine because he's better in the low block area. Tim is the two-time MVP. He has rebounding titles. I mean, he has, if you look at the numbers alone, and you didn't know that Shaq was as big as he was, Tim would stand out to you. 
Dan Miller has got it out front. Pacers a chance to regain the lead. O'Neal fires and nails it. Spurs back up by a pair, and O'Neal equals. Yeah, see, Jermaine O'Neal's not going to stay silent for too long. Pacers are tested O'Neal. You see what they've been combining for. Underneath, O'Neal fights his way to the basket here to make it 49-47. See, Jermaine O'Neal's starting to bark now. Last night, one of the three times he did not get that. But he's also been a big passer here. Right? He's had 20 assists in the last three games. If they lose this game, that will be the story. The turnovers have really been the Achilles heel for this team in this ballgame. O'Neal. Touch on the inside jumper. A soft touch. And he's, now he's got his game going in the second half. This is a matchup we wanted to see. Duncan against O'Neal in the block. And O'Neal wins this one. Now you see what kind of talent he has in the low block area. O'Neal got it over Duncan. Uh, he's just a superstar player in the block area. And that Eastern Conference Player of the Month for December. Well, that shows you why they have the best record in the league. When you have a big man like that that can dominate the Eastern Conference, you're going to win a lot of games. He's got 20. O'Neal over Duncan. O'Neal and Artest, their two leading scorers. Put him right back in the thick of things. Parker gets it blocked. From Conseco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis, it's the NBA on ESPN2. Tonight, two of the best teams in the NBA. The San Antonio Spurs visiting the Indiana Pacers in a game that features two of the best big men, including Tim Duncan, the reigning MVP, looking for his third title. Meanwhile, one of the younger stars, Jermaine O'Neal, who has blossomed into simply the best center in the Eastern Conference. The last two games combined, he's totaled five points on one for ten shooting. O'Neal has the range out there, and Jermaine O'Neal gets the Pacers on the board. You talked in the open, which I never got to respond to you. I can't believe how inept I am on that. <laughs> Duncan's, so hard on yourself. Duncan's ability to add new things, including the left hand. It's an area they struggled early in the season, but have done a much better job since. Foster. Can't deny it down low. Good help defense. He was unsure of himself when he got going, but he's healthy now. He's in shape. He realizes what Popovich wants. This guy could be a major contributor to another championship run for the Spurs. O'Neal with his fourth rebound. He puts it in down the other end. Tinsley having a terrific start. That's his fifth assist, setting up his teammates beautifully. Tonight? Tonight. Not this week, but tonight, five assists already? Early in the season, you'd be aghast at that, but he's playing so well now. Beautiful passing. Oh, O'Neal throws it back. Nope. Remain O'Neal with a terrific block. We saw this last week, and talking to the Pacers, Jermaine O'Neal has been doing this all season long. His ability to rise above the crowd and send balls back time and time again. The effortless jump by Jermaine O'Neal, 25 years old. There you see number four in the NBA. And he hopes that'll improve as guys get more comfortable because, like many teams, they made a number of changes from last year's NBA champs. Johnson can't hit O'Neal right there for the offensive rebound. Elaine O'Neal having a strong start. Eight points, six rebounds, and two block shots. Try to get him some easy baskets. Maybe he'll wake up. But again, you can you can say that about a lot of guys that fall in defense. This oh. is blocked by O'Neal. O'Neal throws it back. And Parker wide open for three. And O'Neal with a rebound. For O'Neal, that was his third block shot. Still early here in the fourth, along with Bill Walton and Doris Burke. Mike Green on hand at Conceco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Spurs and Pacers in a very good physical battle. Where's the offense going to come from? O'Neal. There you go. Finally. He likes that right block. He's been forcing it on the left block all night long. He's only played 22 minutes because he's been in foul trouble now in double figures with 10. Three seconds to go. Circle are really starting to find his comfort zone with this team. O'Neal, quick move on Duncan. 
At 25 years of age, Jermaine O'Neal is, is still a work in progress in his back to the basket game. He much prefers to turn and face. Tough shot from Jermaine O'Neal. He wanted a foul, but Disturbage doing a good job staying vertical. Still over three and a half remaining. Plenty of time for San Antonio. Parker forces it again. Duncan stripped. Ginobili trying to find Duncan, uses the pick and roll. Duncan knocked away by O'Neal. Duncan with five on the shot clock, will try it again. Off the mark, and Artest just kicks it around, and Ori pushes Artest out of bounds. And the Spurs in the penalty zone, Ron Artest will shoot two free throws. Tim Duncan, two of 16 from the field. So by the time they get to the playoffs, they're worn down, broken up. Jermaine O'Neal with the defense. This guy looks great tonight. Why stop? Oh, as he gets leveled to the ground. O'Neal. A season high, seven three-pointers for Miller. And the Indiana Pacers win for the ninth time in their last ten games. Chance of Reggie. Reggie here at Conseco Fieldhouse. A spectacular performance for the 38-year-old Reggie Miller. Again, our final score, the Pacers 89, the Spurs 79, San Antonio's now lost three in a row. Tough place for the visiting team to win. As tonight, it's the Houston Rockets visiting the Pacers at the NBA on ESPN. One of the reasons it's so tough to win here has been the play of their all-star, Jermaine O'Neal. Just keeps getting better and better. He's still only 25, and what a stretch of games he's had for the Pacers. But they've got a tough matchup tonight. Yao Ming and the Rockets in his second season in the NBA. Right now, he's simply playing the best basketball of his young and brief NBA career. And why not? You've got Yao Ming, and they're drawing the defense down into the basket area. They should be leading the NBA in three-point percentage. O'Neal. Jermaine O'Neal steps out. And had the season high 29 on Wednesday night at home against the Knicks. And had a career high 12 field goals. O'Neal just taking Cato down low. Cato's a pretty good post defender like he wasn't even there. This is a game that you would expect the field goal percentages to be in the high 30s, under 40%. So far, though, not the case, but I'm sure that's going to wear down. The defense of both teams, the keys to their success is mobile force that one. Looks good on that possession. Bad pass from Jackson in all aspects. Quickest to the ball, the jumper, setting up his teammates. He's got three assists. Meanwhile, Jermaine O'Neal, not a bad start. Eight points for O'Neal, and the game tied once again. He's done a good job trying to keep it out of Yao's hands after the early quick start. Fresic doing a good job banging him. Taylor stripped behind by Anthony Johnson, and O'Neal able to pick it up. Primo's a good player. A lot of talent. Big, athletic, very versatile, good left hand. Rezic at 7-1, gets the pass off, and O'Neal sit down, double figure for Jermaine O'Neal. I like his leadership in terms of getting Yao Ming more involved. He's very vocal with Yao, and it's O'Neal. Little advantage there on Mo Taylor, and a foul. Jermaine O'Neal this year, when he feels he's got a mismatch in the post, he just goes right to it. Third foul on Taylor. This is a punishing player who, like all great scores never gets tired of filling it up a week ago when we were here for the san antonio game he could not make a single play from that left box that has been his bread and butter tonight the adjustments that jermaine o'neill was able to make from game to game you're talking real growth here for someone who's only 25 years old and the thing too bill he, as we mentioned earlier he's playing this way every single night and a lot of that, you remember, Isaiah Thomas gave him something to think about when Thomas was here. He told him, play every game. There was a game that Bill Russell came to watch him play. Jermaine O'Neal played a fabulous game. He was so inspired by <laughs> Russell's presence. And Thomas said to him, hey, play every game and pretend Bill Russell's in the stands. And he's starting to play every night with that kind of fire. Francis, there's about a second, a little more than a second difference shot in game clock. O'Neal the rebound. Oh, oh, too it. quickly. Here's Reggie Miller at the buzzer. Oh! <laughs> Counted for Reggie Miller. They'll look at the replay. It was a two-pointer. 
But they'll look at the replay just to verify it. They've got to do it when a shot goes in at 0 0 0. And even Larry, with his fresh haircut, that brought a smile to his face. The, the, the king of daggers himself, Larry Bird. I nice. certainly appreciate that. The key here is Francis took his shot too early in the shot clock, and it gave the Pacers too much time. Clearly, the basket's good, and that ends the 10 0 run. I think they've got to go away from him. Reggie Miller's not getting the looks. He's been red hot of late. Tinsley's not able to create himself. O'Neal able to put it in. Our test hurt it against the New Jersey Nets. And, and another thing that he does that's a big part of our chess game is likes to use that left hand to poke the ball away and get deflections, and we haven't seen that from him. He does not have a steal. He's amongst the NBA leaders in steals. You can barely see his thumb, which is so heavily taped. Nice flash. Hey, it's Jermaine O'Neal playing defense tonight. That has been, you know, we talked about his leadership improvement, his defensive movement. He's always been a pretty solid defender, but he's turned it up a notch this year. Nice pass. With a hand in his face, Cato came out, and O'Neal knocks it down. 18 points for Jermaine O'Neal. Jermaine O'Neal, who has outplayed Yao Ming here head-to-head, -head, coming out, setting the screen, and... Neither team really defending the pick and roll very well at all. But with Tinsley willingly giving up the ball early on and Kelvin Cato slow to react, Jermaine O'Neal can knock down that shot with great regularity. Mobley's been quiet offensively. Excellent defense from Reggie Miller. Mobley makes something out of nothing but a bad shot. And Cato will try again. 24 second violation. The ball never hit the rim. What about the difference in personalities between Tinsley and Jermaine O'Neal in our pregame conversation? Miller felt he was out and he turned it over. Jackson blocked by O'Neal. Oh, terrific rejection. He timed it beautifully. His third block of the game. Fourth in the NBA in block shots. If they give the ball to Yao Ming more, they would get to the free throw line more. Although Yao needs, part of it, he just needs to be more assertive. O'Neal spinning, top shot from Jermaine O'Neal. 20 points. NBA history. That roster that had the bonus, Pippen, they didn't win a championship. I wouldn't put them up there. Not everybody gets to win a championship. They listen to you. Wow. O'Neal knocks it down, and the Pacers with it, too. Now it is eighth year in the NBA. Of course, didn't play a lot in his first four years in Portland, but the promise was there. Then he was traded to Indiana for Dale Davis, and he's done amazing things. Now an all-star for the Indiana Pacers, and his new coach, Rick Carlisle, admits even he's a little surprised how talented this kid is. I knew he was good, but I didn't know how good. And uh, I'm just really impressed with his uh, maturity, his sort of feel and sense for the league and what it's about. Um, he's shown, uh, I think, uh, uncharacteristic leadership for a guy 25 years old. And uh, really, I think you've got to put him in that small group of MVP candidates. Without question, uh, following Tim Duncan and Kevin Garnett, remember those guys are a little bit older than uh, Jermaine O'Neal. Plenty of time remaining, just under five and a half left in this fourth quarter. Now this is a tough isolation here. They're up against the shot clock. Miller finding O'Neal. Yao gets a hand up. Oh. O'Neal knocks it down. Miller has been quiet offensively. Our test to O'Neal. Jermaine O'Neal puts it in, and it's back to a two-point game. And that's an MVP response. Playing with five fouls. Team losing control here. So give me that ball and get out of my way. 28 points for Jermaine O'Neal. Miller against Mobley. Uh, I like this isolation here for Jermaine O'Neal. This is his game. O'Neal drives on Yao, puts it in, and the Pacers have their first lead of the second half. And it's controlled by Tinsley and the Indiana Pacers, so they will get the ball to start the fourth quarter as well. The Kings will get the ball to start quarters two and three. Here's the matchup that coach was talking about and now one goes to Jermaine O'Neal. So it stays 4-2. And Indiana has not missed a thing. Well right now Jermaine O'Neal very confident in his offensive game as he should. It's certainly a 
Lottie may have gotten away with a push, and now he has it taken away by Jermaine O'Neal. The Kings from penetrating the basketball or getting anything off their offense. That was a, definitely a forced opportunity. Harrington, and it slipped off his hand, and it's still there. there for Page. It got him open. And a three no good, but the rebound comes out to O'Neal, and he'll walk in, and he goes through two purple jerseys. That time, Durant O'Neal able to go past Chris Weber, then uh, go over the top of Lonnie Devon. Bad pass picked off by O'Neal in Indiana. Ray, certainly one of the elite young big players in this league. Actually, one of the elite players in the league, any age. Well, and he, the Kings just simply need to get some stops here, make it tough on the Pacers uh, for a couple possessions. No matter who guards Jermaine O'Neal, whether it's Brad Nippin, and boy, he has uh, picked up where he left off in Sacramento. Certainly has a nice slow post move, just that turnaround jump shot, got the ball in deep, nice hook, the quickness to the hoop, able to drive and make the hoop with the left hand. Again, in the low post, little step away move over the top of Chris Weber for another jump shot, able to really get this Indiana Pacer team off to a strong start. Anthony, or rather Fred Jones, uh, gets to O'Neal. And he goes around his former teammate, Brad Miller. 47-33. You got to make sure you keep contact with these Pacers. Don't let them run away. 16-point game. Christie splits the defense. Wild no. Quickly back. Miller challenging. Brad Miller. O'Neal rejected that. What a hustle by Jermaine O'Neal. Neal at the line. Boy, he takes his time, doesn't he? I feel like he's got a great position to still win this basketball game. Well, it's now 56-40 as We might be looking uh, to help out on O'Neal if need be. And Foster from O'Neal. Miller from Weber, blocked by O'Neal. Weber, but a nice uh, block as well. Looks like Brad Miller's open. He moves the ball, but he can't get away from the athletic long Jermaine O'Neal. In this game, he's two of four. Watch out for Reggie Miller. Here's Harrington. Good defense. Oh, my goodness. Jermaine O'Neal. To the floor. Well, now we'll watch this as Harrington takes a tough shot. Watch Jermaine O'Neal just fly in out of your picture and throw it down. Huge hoop. O'Neal is double teamed. And here it's by Jermaine O'Neal. Well, here's Jermaine O'Neal getting the ball. Inside. Very well defended. This is just a terrific young player making a terrific shot. Big time players make big time plays, and that's what you. King still with a 20-second timeout to use with 24.7 on the clock. And Rick Adam is saying, how long are you going to give this guy to shoot free throws? I mean, it really is. I mean, that's 15 seconds right there. Time and this is a team that has been so good here at home, 32-7. and seven. At Conseco, they've won their last six in a row. And still with a chance to get that home court. Tinsley knocks down the three. Quinn Buckner, one of the Hoosier legends who's doing television here tonight on the Indiana Network. When he went to Teaneck, of course, that's a popular story now back in the metropolitan areas, college business. He tried out for the basketball team all four years at Teaneck High School. Well, they are shooting 46% from the field, and the Pacers have not shot well in the early going. Tinsley, the extra pass to O'Neal. O'Neal double team gets it to Foster. And Foster so often picks up those garbage baskets, runs around after he gets a nice feed from his teammate. They help their squad. They both played last night. Martin actually left the game for a while because his knee was hurting him so much. Artest left-handed, can't get it to go, but a nice follow. Oh, what a luxury that Carlisle has. Harrington can play four different positions. Play guard, all three front court positions. Nice touch from Jermaine O'Neal. Standing around for Indiana. Shot clock winding down. Jefferson trying to poke it away. And O'Neal oh. suddenly finding the range. He yells at Derek Richardson, thought he was fouled as well. They're going nowhere without Jamal Tinkley playing at the top of his game. 
O'Neal. Shot clock winding down again. O'Neal with a hand in his face. Oh. Sit down. Jermaine O'Neal. All 14 of his points in the second half and the Pacers back up by seven. Only Miller's second field goal of the game. But it gives the Pacers some breathing room. O'Neal coming alive. Indiana in a zone. Hamidish. Tough shot. O'Neal had the rebound. Lost it to Foster right there to pick it up. Orange Frank has brought Richard, Richard Jefferson back in. They went for the steal and got burned as Jermaine O'Neal finishes. And the lead back up to 11. Coming against the winner of that New Jersey-Detroit second round matchup. And the winner of that matchup will be bruised severely. Shot clock winding down on the next turn it over New Jersey. 16 turnovers, which have led to 21 points. Meanwhile, the Pacers with only seven turnovers the entire game. Harrington. O'Neal. O'Neal lighting it up in the second half. All 18 of his points came after intermission. And it seems like every one of them have come off a pass from Al Harrington. That guy's the creator tonight. Tinsley got his hands on another one. Oh, look at that pass. Harrington! <laughs> <laughs> that may have been one of the highlights of the season if that one went down. But again, it all starts with the defense. O'Neal continues his second half eruption and this is the largest lead of the game was 32 and 12 at one point but then they had a number of things go wrong they had injuries they had personal tragedies deaths in the family of several players they had Ron Artest who knocks that one down Calabrini is fouled and, and we haven't even talked about Kenyon Martin much because that guy is an all-star player O'Neal, oh, Jermaine O'Neal has torched him in the second half. Kenyon Martin, though, he has had his way with Jermaine O'Neal as New Jersey has been able to beat these Indiana Pacers over the last few years as Kenyon Martin has risen to the all-star level. By the way, the reason I keep saying single season... And welcome to the NBA playoffs from Conseco Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. We start the playoffs in 2004 the way we started them in 2003 with Indiana hosting Boston. The top home court record in the Eastern Conference. Eight to shoot. Our test against Erie Welsh. Put him away and Ron Artest has scored the last two hoops for Indiana. Chucky Atkins, one of just a few of the Celtics with the playoff experience. Ron Artest finds O'Neal. Jermaine O'Neal from the perimeter. Well, you talk about a big dominant player like Jermaine O'Neal on the block and then added skill to be able to step outside. So unstoppable. And the big reason is because they're not settling just for jump shots. There's a little penetration. Look at the movement around the horn, making the second and third pass, finding the easy who understands what to do with the ball, but if he's going to get open looks, then he can make them. Pierce couldn't finish the dunk. Foster against McCarty. Well, he's got a three-pointer in this game already. And off the drive, Tinsley leaves it for O'Neal. Well, O'Neal again drawn Blount out. In nine career games, only about two and a half points, close to three rebounds a game in 143 minutes. He's got to be able to feel comfortable in this setting. Jermaine O'Neal with seven, and the Pacers lead by seven. Well, they have a chance to do something extraordinary here. When I talked about the psychological wheels, you know, last year they ousted the Pacers even though they were the number three seed and the Celtics were number six. Close games like this make the Pacers think a little bit. O'Neal gets the basket and draws the foul as the Pacers go back up by one. O'Neal in double figures with ten. Attacking the offensive glass a little bit right now. Not the best rebounding team in the NBA, but they recognize the stay in this game. They've got to assert themselves. Two-hand jam by Jermaine O'Neal. Absolutely no answer on the defensive end do the Celtics have for Jermaine O'Neal. As far as the score is concerned, because in this place, particularly, the Pacers can score in a bunch. O'Neal against Mim. Jermaine O'Neal has been locked on today. 15 points for him in the first half. 
And Boston wants time, and they're coming to their feet at Conseco. Nine of the last ten scored by the Indiana Pacers to open up their biggest lead at eight. On the floor, he just finds his man. Looking for cutters here, and he finds O'Neal. Pierce spins in. Our test with a block. Pierce a recovery. Ooh, looked like Pierce cleared out. Welsh off the drive, and his shot is blocked at the rim. So much so uh, that he's now a co-captain of this team. Banks on the drive in for the right, lost it. Pierce had the shot swatted out of there. The Pacers end up with it. He's had just three free throws since, hasn't played a lot of minutes. Ron Artest with 24 points and ends up with a rebound. Ron Artest's playoff career high is 26, so he's got a shot at that with 537 left. Well, speaking of Reggie Miller, he's the one that got the Pacers started. They went to him early, and he doesn't necessarily need the numbers in this particular game. It's having to be ready down the stretch. Jermaine O'Neal delivers out of the post. Is one of those things that uh, will will out. I mean, there's, there's a newfound enthusiasm in New York with Isaiah Thomas, people he's brought in, but maybe they're a year away. Jermaine O'Neal loaded that one up and finished with both hands. So the final seconds of game one as the Pacers are about to go up one game to none. Boston stayed with them in the first. They were down by only one, but Indiana had it opened up by halftime as they were up by 22. And they coast in today, 104 to 88. Starting at one forward, number seven, Jermaine O'Neal. Here's Pierce. Trying to feed the post and ground. It's intercepted by O'Neal. And another rebound for Pierce. They leave Welsh open, a three-pointer. And Jermaine O'Neal, another rebound for Indiana. In, in Boston, you see a Dallas kind of attitude. And there is Jermaine O'Neal just streaking across the lane. And the emphatic finish as he ties this game at four. In game one on Saturday. A bit of an awkward moment for him. His first postseason game, Jermaine O'Neal hasn't had the shot, but does it affect his thought process there again decides to attack the rim a tremendous rookie season steve just continues for that young man dwayne wade wade has uh, been terrific and is going to be terrific for a long time to come and he's only going to get better and if this weren't the year of lebron james or camillo anthony he would undoubtedly be the rookie of the year but a terrific uh, group of young players have come into the nba so we ought to see some excitement for a long long time Unusual lineup tonight, and if you are just joining us, Ron Artest, who yesterday was awarded the Defensive Player of the Year award, suspended tonight as Jermaine O'Neal started to find his rhythm, his third field goal, seven points now. And so they've been able to stay in the game. Davis, yet to find anything from the perimeter. Davis now 0-3 shooting, and the Celtics is a team now 11 of 27 at 40 percent. Jermaine Jones is in the ball game, and he's there to do a better defensive job as Jermaine O'Neal comes over the top against Al Harrington. Harrington uh, was torturing Mark Blount, so O'Neal is back in as a steadying force and giving some inside presence, and they didn't have it with Austin Crozier out on the floor. Davis, a good, great recognition, but Blount blocked inside. Who's in his eyesight at the time the issue comes up. Ricky has also had a very popular relationship with these fans in Indiana as Jermaine O'Neal has gotten very comfortable now offensively. As Jermaine, the first player tonight in double digits on either side, he has 11. And the Celtics have capitalized so far. O'Neal way out. Why not? Everything falling now for Jermaine O'Neal. He has 13 points. And a fresh 24 for the Pacers. Tinsley. It's a strength sets up Jermaine O'Neal from the outside. And the pace is to within one point now. You're going to get stripped a lot, and that's what happened to Jermaine O'Neal. Crowd thought it was a foul. Tipped away Harrington. Here is Jermaine now, a two-on-one. 
And a spinning finish by Jermaine O'Neal. He has a game-high 17 points. Playing without their all-star defensive leader, Ron Artest, suspended. One game by the NBA yesterday. Tinsley jump stop right through the defense. And he finishes off the window. Get into at least the confidence of the Indiana Pacers and make them have some doubt. Here's Jones, a three, too short. O'Neal, another opportunity. And Jermaine O'Neal took a shot to the face that time. No call, but O'Neal now at 20. Fender way strong, and, and Davis tracks it down. Celtics frantically trying to come into the deficit here. Davis loses the handle, and O'Neal comes away with it. A four on that three. As uh, we have 26 seconds left in the ball game, and uh, it's about a two-second differential between shot and game clock, and the Pacers with the big fourth quarter will put this one away. So these two teams will have a couple of days off. They go back to the drawing board, certainly if you're the Boston Celtics. They will head back to Boston, down 0-2. And this first round playoff series has the closure with the final shot as the fourth quarter horn sounds here at Conceco Fieldhouse. So the pace is getting contributions up and down their roster tonight. Susie Schuster is standing by with two of their stars. Susie? I've got Jermaine O'Neal. I've got Fred Jones and Jermaine. Another playoff double-double for you. This game was a scrum for three quarters, but in the fourth quarter, the Pacers were able to pull away. What was the difference? Well, we, we didn't feel like we gave our best effort. You know, we felt like we just uh, let them get a, you know get 19 easy points in transition. We know if we walk down defensively, things are going to go our way. Uh, the better defense we play, the better offense we play, and it's kind of hand-in-hand with us. We did that the second half. How impressed were you with how the bench played? A guy to my right had a pretty nice game. They're the reason why we won the game. The starters were still struggling in the third quarter they came in the game and made it happen real big for us so no, we you got to tip your hats off to those guys they, they, they're the real reason why we won the game tonight Jermaine were you impressed with how your team was able to play filling Ron Artest's shoes tonight no the team has did that all year you know when I was out they did the same thing when Al Reggie who always been out the team has found a way you know to win games so I think a lot of people don't talk about our high depth and our talent on our team, but I think we have the best bench in the league. I think we have one of the best rosters in the league, and tonight proves the same thing like they've did all year, that we can, no matter who's playing the game, we can still win the game. Jermaine, Fred, time to pack your bags for Boston. Thanks, guys. Spiro, let's up, go back Ron? to you. What up, Ron? Now, the Pacer. The return of our test, Jermaine O'Neal, a great young player. This is a very tough team. Uh, they really are organized beautifully on the defensive end. I think Jermaine O'Neal playing off the ball, Brent, has been extraordinary. He attacks the rim in a ferocious fashion for his strong send it in. But defensively, this is what I like, when they get their easy baskets, it's deflection by him and a run out, but he's established a low post game. That's pretty extraordinary. Easily forced back outside. You know, they jump in, O'Neal coming through, and one. Weak side help was there, but there was still a blocking foul against the Celts. I think the restraining line, he was within that area. Nice penetration there. That's what O'Neal can do. We saw him take the jump shot. He's very good understanding how to get himself free. They do a lot of cross screens to get him to the box area, and I think that's how you can't gamble and sell out. You see the Celtics do that once in a while. You've got to stay at home. Let him catch it if you can't get a piece of it. So he's now moves into Milwaukee for a couple of games. Here's O'Neal on the entry turnaround for the baseline using the glass. Very slick, smooth operator. He's got to come off screens and also go directly at his guy. And Chris Martes, nice roll out here. Bender and low and one. Uh, Pierce was on the bench for a little over seven minutes. <laughs> Not much there. And, of course, that developed a friendship which ensued here with the Pacers. Yeah, Isaiah you. left, and, of course, he's here. We knew him. He went to the new camp with him in Hawaii as he gets a turnaround jumper. That's why he is so tough. He can face up, and he can put his back. He's comfortable with his back to the basket. That's a 16-6 run. Well, I'll tell you something else about Jermaine O'Neal, and he shocked me. He knew the stats, folks. He has averaged 22 points a game against the Western Conference and 19 points a game against the Eastern Conference. I want you to think about that for a minute. Pierce on the drive. 
Jermaine O'Neal. O'Neal, of course, is lobbying long and hard, and he says the media is giving the Eastern Conference this year way too much credit that we're just as good as they are, and he has been keeping it up, and he's got his numbers down. And with, uh, Nomar watching basketball tonight. The latest we heard, the Red Sox led the Yankees 1-0 down at the stadium as O'Neal goes in for the deuce against Chris Miller. Can they sustain that energy? That's what they have to do to Celts, and he gets back to running their stuff for the Pacers. O'Neal spins inside and one. Oof. Very active for the big guy. He was out on the left in a double screen situation. And once the ball went right, a good anticipation as they cut. The help leaves him just enough. And Blount can't recover. A little swipe and a chance for three. Real solid judgment cutting to the hoop. He's five of nine from the field. Can't cut into that 10-point margin at the free throw line. So stepping out high is our test. Pierce on him. Neal. Foster whew, forces up a nice little hook underneath in traffic. And O'Neal took the defense with him with the dribble. Their vision and Foster reads it beautifully. Moves in on O'Neal, who blocks it. Oh, get it out of Dodge. Now, watch the defense here. This is what makes Indiana so legal. It's timing, anticipation, and the ability to elevate. And look at the left hand, too. I mean, that's amazing. If he used the right, he probably would have fouled, Brent. Heads up play, even to the end. Terrific negator to complement the great perimeter D. And Johnson with a great slide down to help in front of Blount. Pick and roll. Mm. Boy, they're efficient on that pick and roll. I didn't realize they used it that way. Well, the, the one thing with O'Neal, he has improved that shot, that slot. He really, 15 to 18 feet. Is he can make threes, you know, but they draw people with the drive and then kick it back. Well, a couple of years, maybe right, right now, the shooting is the question, but he can run a team. He doesn't turn the ball over and gets it inside. O'Neal steps mm. it outside over Blount. And you notice Artest ducking in, the, the option of dumping it down. See what the Celts come up with here in their first set if they try to get number 34 going. They do. They rub Artest. He goes to the glass and missed the layup. Had a golden opportunity. They get a high screen on Artest, and Pierce couldn't close the deal. Now, Brent, that's a play out of the old Celtic book. And here they go inside, and unfortunately, Blount with the giveaway. A side scissor for Pierce. In fairness to Pierce, after he got those two quick fouls in game three, he really wasn't the same, was he? And he looks like he is out of the funk. And I think some of the things they ran early got him involved in the offense. Nice denial by O'Neal. Blount's very active, and Artest has got him when he tapped it back to him. And three on one, no chance for the Celts there. Reggie now to Foster, give it back to Tinsley, and the point guard spins back left. Pretty. It was beautiful. So that's what I think Larry Bird likes. He thinks passing first. Pierce thought the ball was out of bounds. He's got to get back defensively. O'Neal spins, Mim is there. But from the corner. And he's loaded up down here with Pierce. He can elevate. Blocked by O'Neal. Good shot blocker. Great off the ball and just reads things beautifully. Elio. And nobody home. Everybody looking around. Jermaine O'Neal. Right away, sees daylight. Give it to me. And Paul Pierce should have followed him. Send it in, big fella. Jumps out on a switch, gets back on Pierce. And O'Neal just denies. That's a great run. And they've got a three-on-one run out. That's why. Uh, that's unfortunate for the Celtics. The turnovers leading immediately to baskets, but where they turn it over. That was just extremely well done. And then the alley oop pass to Jermaine. That's taking it to him. And just the mental approach that Artes brings. He just punishes you. And uh, so they're going to leave him out there with the four right now. Automat uh, usually that'd be automatic that you would come out in an NBA game at this moment. And uh, O'Neal drains one over the top. Picked up O'Neal and kept Reggie Miller. And uh, then Larry got Rick Carlisle to be the coach. There's Jermaine with a great block. The biggest problem 
of oil. This is like when they had three first round picks, no, no longer with the team, of course, in 2001. That didn't help, that particular draft. Biggest problem this franchise, unable to overcome. As the crowd tries to get into it, and Jermaine nails the jumper against him. In the meeting with Rick the other day, didn't you get the feeling he thought that this was going to be very competitive here? Yes. And, and I think we both did too. We expected more of a effort, be more competitive, but uh, you know, diffusing, self-diffusing. This one to continue. He wants to snap it right here. There's only four on the shot. Jones drives, O'Neal lays it in at the buzzer. What a great use of the bounce by Jones. Drawn and then slipping it to O'Neal. That was just terrific. And a uh, smattering of applause and a few boos from the crowd here as it ends with Indiana sweeping the Boston Celtics. <laughs> The Heat surged into the playoffs and survived in seven. The Miami Heat, no one gave them a chance, and now they move to the second round. Where they come face to face with the best record in the league. The Pacers have playoff savvy and a frontline star who's no longer the other O'Neal. Indiana, the odds-on favorite. Miami, the swaggering underdog. The Pacers with everything to prove. The Heat with nothing to lose. Game one, tonight on TNT. All right, now for the Indiana Pacers. They made very quick order of the Boston Celtics, sweeping them in four games. But, Doug, they haven't played in 11 days. This team had the best regular season record in the NBA. How do they craft that? Well, they might get off to a slow start tonight because of the layoff, but they go to their big people. They pound it inside. That's the strength of their team, and that's where they're going to go. We talked to Rick Carlisle before the game. It starts with Jermaine O'Neal. They're exciting, young, talented, power forward. With a shot clock down, it's O'Neal. Well, this young guy has so developed. I am so impressed with his maturity. In the first three years, he out in Portland, didn't get a chance to play much, was traded here for Dale Davis, and has just grown as a player. Indiana does such a good job. Their big men are so mobile. They can get out on those screen rolls and get back to their own man. That's what is on O'Neal. Loves to shoot that little spinning jump shot on the baseline. Here's our test. He worked endlessly on his outside shot this past summer. It's paid off. O'Neal. That shot right there. Either a jump shot or a jump hook. That's his little move. What he does, he's, he's learning to create space with his body. A little bump enough to create that space and get the shot on. So Miami 11 for 37 from the four. How they only down by two. They've gotten 10 more shots at the basket because of eight offensive rebounds. So they're shooting poorly, but they're getting more shots. That's Jermaine O'Neal. Thanks, Kevin. Jermaine, you much has been made of the 11-day layoff. The junior teammates get accomplished in the first half, which you wanted to here in game one. We're pretty happy with, with the way things are going right now. Obviously, uh, we put a little rest in the first quarter. Uh, we were able to get our feet up on us the second quarter. Hopefully, we can turn it up and play the type of defense and offense that we normally play uh, before the 11 days came. As you come out after the half, what are you looking to do? You talk about turning up the defense. Will it be something different in your game plan? Well, we just want to keep the pressure up. Obviously, turning it up. Uh, turn our intensity up, you know, making better passes and making better shots. Uh, you know, we feel like we have the best team in the league. We feel like we have the most depth. Uh, if we come out and we play hard on both ends of the floor, I don't think anybody in the league can beat us. All right, Jermaine, thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half. Kevin? Two years ago, he was the most improved player in the NBA. He is a three-time All-Star. He finished third in this year's MVP balloting. He was All-NBA second team. He is one of the best in the NBA, Jermaine O'Neal. Leading his team to the best regular season record in the NBA and leading his Indiana Pacers to a 10 point lead at halftime in this game one as we take you to Atlanta and Ernie Johnson. Just what you talked about. Yeah, it's great stuff, Charles. And I, and I just looked at the stat sheet and I told Kevin, Eddie Jones only one shot. They got to find a way to get him involved in this game. Jermaine O'Neal, seven points. Jamal Tinsley's got six. And now he nails a three and he gives the Indiana Pacers, Doug Collins, their biggest lead tonight. Indiana, the number one seed, not only in the Eastern Conference, but in the entire NBA playoffs. As long as they're alive, home court is there. That is Jermaine O'Neal. He's got nine points. 
And a Miami timeout. If they were playing better, they'd have some more emotion and they'd ride the crest of that energy in that series. Right now, they're struggling. They, they got to find somebody to get a score. Have Butler being guarded by Ortez. See if Odom can get something going to get Jeff Foster. It's Brian Grant. Jump ball. Nice defense by Jermaine O'Neal. You know, it's interesting at halftime to hear Charles Barkley talk about if he had anything to do in his career, he wish he'd have been a better defensive player. And, and I think that when you look at a Jer Jermaine O'Neal, uh, this young guy has really made strong strides to play both ends of the floor. And I think that's one of the reasons why he was one of the top vote getters in MVP third. That's not bad to be behind Duncan and Kevin Garnett in terms of most valuable player in the NBA. Reginald is 2 of 5. Ron Artest is 7 of 17. O'Neal, wide open, Kingsley for 3. He's been free tonight. They'll reload. And that is 10 rebounds for Foster tonight with 7 points. And to Jermaine O'Neal. See, Foster had a wide open shot. He's not going to take that shot. He makes the extra pass. He knows what he can do. You know, you miss so many things that youth has to bring. And I know it's tough to say no to the money. It's easy for me to sit here and, and talk about these young guys, 15, 20 million dollars flashed at them. But I looked at the Tim Duncans and the Grand Hills and, and Jermaine O'Neal. Now, he came out of high school, but you know what? He didn't play for three years. Yeah, he's a rare case he's of a guy who is a forever Jermaine O'Neal. There's 30 guys who you don't know, do it. Al Harrington didn't play for three years. Right. I mean, these guys sat. It's a good win for the Indiana Pacers tonight. Over the Miami Heat, a team that would not die and show the kind of determination that got them by a favorite New Orleans team in round one. They led by 23 at one time in the second half. They end up winning by 13. Led by the 25 points of Ron Artest. And a good 17-point performance with five three-point hits from Jamal Tinsley. Reggie Miller gets the first touch, and Artest still playing with that left thumb bandaged, although he warms up without it. The injury he suffered it. He only missed five games because of it. Jermaine O'Neal inside. Wow, what a beautiful move to start off the ball game by Jermaine O'Neal. Just too much size for that Miami Heat front line. They've been a horrendous three-point shooting team so far in the playoffs, about 25-26%. O'Neal from the elbow. Got it. He's pretty good, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you know, thinking Coach Riley was going to be the coach right. there. He steps down, and there's not a better guy to learn from than him, but Stan Van Gundy, who's done a fantastic job with his team after being under Riley for so long. Here is Odom on the drive, pinned against the glass by O'Neal. And now our test coming the other way and jammed it. Oh. Ouch. That was nasty. And he said, Holly! <laughs> Up until that point, O'Neal and Miller had all the Pacer points. Our test with some authority puts his name in the book. Wade slipped as he let fly with a long jumper, and now the man in front, our test again against Wade, and he's fouled. And look at that strength by Ron Artest. Dwayne Wade trying to rack him up or push him out of bounds, and he still managed to get that shot up. Dan Van Gundy says, let's talk about it right now. After Miami got its first lead, Indiana comes back to score three points, and one of them was a man point. And it's coming up right here. <laughs> Gotta love it. Fans love it. 6.26 remaining first quarter. Pacers in front by two. There you see Jermaine O'Neal. This is the difference between merely decent defensive teams and great defensive teams. He's coming in to help out Jeff Foster, who gets beat by Lamar Odom, and that's your safety. That leads to the fast break and an easy two points the other way. Jermaine O'Neal holding down the paint for the Indiana Pacers. And we all know that Ron Artest was named the you know, defensive player of the year, but I tell you what, Jermaine O'Neal being behind him helps. Because yes. when I played with Alonzo Mourning, it just allowed me to get up on my guy, knowing that if the guy happened to get around me, I had that human eraser behind me, and that's what Jermaine O'Neal, he's waiting at the basket, knowing if Artest gets beat, he's going to block the shot. Nice little ball fake. Got yeah, himself not, in the lane. They're not settling for any jumpers. They're going strong to the hole. That was pretty strong for O'Neal. It seemed like he had a swarm of Heat players around him. He just muscled it in. He's too long down there. He's got long arms, and he's able to just put the ball right over the top of Brian Grant. That last one could have given them the lead. O'Neal leaves it underneath for Harrington. Nice pass. Well, you see the big fella putting the ball on the floor, drawing the help, and giving his teammate a wide open layup. 
It's just amazing these Indiana big men. Jermaine O'Neal, if he's post, if he's not posting it up, he's beating you on the perimeter. Then he's giving himself in the lane, dropping bounce passes to Al Harrington. Big men aren't supposed to do that. They look like they've lost a little bit of energy here to end this third quarter. He'd have to pick it up and try to get a flurry. Great wraparound pass by Tinsley, and O'Neal finished it off. The only problem is Jermaine looked like he landed kind of funny, and he's limping up court right now. I'm going to hear what Jermaine O'Neal thought about that very topic before this game is over. Here he is in the low block against Brian Grant and scoring. Another relatively quiet night for O'Neal with 12, but his presence is always felt. And his brother, just for people that don't know out there, Jeff Van Gundy of the Houston Rockets. is his little brother. Malik Allen, it's going to stay in the record books. Six straight by double digits. Perfect 6-0 so far in the playoffs. I oh, really see right now the difference in Indiana. Two or three guys touch the ball, four guys sometimes. But most of the time with the heat, the first guy that gets it will end up trying to create. And O'Neal inside. O'Neal has not been scoring at the pace they thought he would, but you know he can explode in a hurry. The shooter has to shoot to get on. I think he told me that. Yeah. <laughs> you've been around Rex too long, John. I can tell that right now. You might have coached differently if you've been around Rex. Here's O'Neal from the baseline, and you know at any moment O'Neal could really explode in a game like this. Our test looking inside. What a year he has had. He is so strong. Jermaine O'Neal kicks it out to Tinsley with six on the shot clock. Tinsley to O'Neal. What a nice feed that time. Fits Miami the most. I don't think they, they can grind a game out with Indiana. They have, they're too deep and they're too too good players in the post. O'Neal leans, bodies hit the floor, no whistle. Give the basket to Jermaine O'Neal. 8:21 to go. First half. 23-20. Miami. O'Neal inside to Harrington. Got it in deep. That's goaltending on Lamar Odom. Shot clock expires, but here comes Miami the other way. Eddie Jones inside blocked by Jermaine O'Neal. Grant has a block by Jeff Foster. Great support by Indiana. Great support. Look at the scramble for the ball. Tinsley eventually able to come up with a dribble. Inside O'Neal. I don't know how he saw him. He was out here gathering himself, and he found Jermaine wide open. And here's Eddie Jones. He's attacking. He's doing the things, trying to get himself involved. But there's the long arm of the law and Jermaine O'Neal. You come back, you come back, and you got <laughs> Curry O'Neal out front, Jamal Kendrick, and what a pass. Yeah. In the regular season, Jermaine O'Neal had 199 blocks. 48-42, Miami. Trying to stay alive in this series. That ball deflected, Foster off balance, got it to O'Neal. Nice play by Jeff Foster. I like that one a lot better when he's going to the basket and around that lane. Play. Beautiful pass by Tinsley to Jermaine O'Neal. Paulson, along with Jones in the backcourt, into Lamar Odom. Odom to Malik Allen. Allen goes up, blocked. Bender was there. O'Neal was there, and they're going to say it's off of the heat. I believe they're going to turn this around. No? No, no. They're going to give it to Indiana. I think Lamar Odom's got to shoot that ball. Let's look right at here. it again. Yeah, that's a great call. Malik Allen sure did touch it right before it went out of bounds. With hands in their face, where Indiana's coming back down and getting layup, dunks, and free throws. 15 points down for Dwayne Wade. O'Neal, that's a major league baseline drive by a guy who this year was third in the MVP ballot. This is the biggest lead of the game for Miami. 85-75, a minute 38. They swing it around, into the corner. A shot on the way, and good. Big shot. And Harrington hits from the corner. Big shot. Played outside now, we have one minute left. Jones has partially blocked. Filing in and ready to go, so they're very excited about this young Miami Heat team. And as we said, over 20,000 scalpers are having a field day outside today. Here's O'Neal off the strong this time in the low block, and that's his first basket. At that time, he catches it eight feet away from the bucket, and then you're dead. And unless you have some type of help coming over, it's two points. You have 20,000 people screaming and yelling behind you. It just gives you a, a huge adrenaline rush. Great bounce pass by Reggie Miller, and O'Neal slams one. Our test, you know, has picked up the score and become a, a lethal weapon on the offense, but yet is a great defensive player. Wade, tough shot. He was in traffic all the way. O'Neal with a rebound, and Wade checking his forehead. 
see if he's bleeding. He took a shot somewhere inside in there. So basically what I was saying, Sean, is I couldn't score. <laughs> no deal outside. Now you couldn't score inside the arc. About three or four feet beyond it. Forget about it. Indiana goes right back in front by three. Pacers have hit their last five shots in a row. With eight on the shot clock, make it six in a row. Yeah, yeah, they don't need a just tough down there yeah, for anybody. Ryan Grant trying to front Lamar Odom just a little late getting over there on the help side. And when O'Neal gets it that close to the basket, there's nothing you can do. Here he is, Garland Tinsley. But that leaves O'Neal open momentarily on the baseline, spinning around Grant. Nice move. Expand your game. His hands are ready nice. for O'Neal. That's how Tinsley was able to sneak in there and take that ball away. Here's another steal. Now it's a four on one. O'Neal. Lays it in, he's got a dozen. The lead swells to nine. Now they have a three and a half minute field goal drop. They broke at the last tip, and now they get it right back up. And Brad, you wonder why Miami plays so well home. You see when this crowd gets in, you see the body language of the Miami Heat. They're playing better defense, they're hustling, they're starting to make shots. That's why this home court advantage is so big for them. O'Neal gives the advantage right back to the Pacers and add one. Big shot, big move by Jermaine O'Neal. Who does? Our cast weaving through white jerseys has to give it up. O'Neal got it back off the miss. They'll try again. That little jump hook is good for his 20th first half point. Seven of Odom's nine points in this quarter. And O'Neal just keeps taking over. Inside, outside, he's got it all working. 24 in the half. 10 of this quarter. Man, I hear you loud and clear. That was a big time move. And I've been watching Tinsley in the pick and rolls as O'Neal scores again. He's just unbelievable tonight. But when the Pacers have started this quarter 0 for 6, haven't scored yet. You know, you're banging with Jermaine O'Neal the entire ball game. Your legs are going to be a little tired. There's their first field goal of quarter number three. All the starters except Eddie Jones in double figures now for Miami. Here's the O'Neal Grant matchup. O'Neal, fadeaway jumper, goes, and a foul on Grant as well. Oh, man, 30 for O'Neal and a chance to add to it. That's just superb concentration by Jermaine O'Neal. Made a nice move to the baseline, and Brian Grant, first off, is doing a good job moving his feet and his body, but Jermaine O'Neal, that's just too good. Not a lot you can do there. Not. A lot anybody could do there against Jermaine O'Neal. There's nothing wrong with Brian Grant's defense, that's for sure. And again, the last 13 trips down court have only produced one field goal. And almost a turnover there. O'Neal. Oh, man, 32 for O'Neal. Tinsley goes all the way in. And tipped in by Jermaine O'Neal. Well, he knows, he knows about about basketball. He might know about N.A. He didn't know anything about D. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Johnson with plenty of time on the shot clock being shot up by Dwayne Wade getting it back from Miller Here's O'Neal O'Neal defended by Grant and Jermaine O'Neal passing open Johnson wide open hits the three from the corner and That's much better. He got the same deep shot that he was looking for after several passes he had more time And coach you know when it comes when it's inside and it goes back out that shot got a lot better chance of going in Anthony Johnson 8 for 16, shooting 50% from the field in the series. Kawhi Butler with the fall away and O'Neal the rebound. He had been to beat there, had him beat, but I believe he was staring into the face of Jermaine O'Neal under the bucket and decided to pull up. Heat lead is one. Bender finding O'Neal. And Joe Jermaine O'Neal making his presence felt. Coming back here in the second quarter, the Pacers regain the lead. Well, it was a good idea. Malik, you've got to know Malik Allen, he's a he's kind of a jump shot, a jump shooter, and he's not a guy that's going to flash to the basket. He should have been flashing that time. Odom defending against O'Neal has no defense against Jermaine O'Neal, who has emerged as a bona fide star in this league. Struggling shooting the ball, and now he's, got, he's complaining, complaining about the be officiating as well. It not a good sign. And he's got to come outside if he's going to get shots because he's not going to be able to muscle if he's in the other player. O'Neal, turnaround. Well done. So,
Jermaine O'Neal, who spent most of the first quarter on the bench for two fouls, now has nine points to lead all scorers and a five-point Indiana lead. And this is exactly what we talked about in the open, guys. These prolonged scoring droughts by the Miami Heat. Right now, they're going to the post, Indiana is. They're getting everything and anything that they want inside. From the Staples Center as the Spurs go against the Lakers right here on TNT. Ten on the shot clock. Grant defending against O'Neal who goes in and gets the lane. O'Neal very aggressive with the ball that time. Here at Conceco Fieldhouse, game five of the best of seven Eastern semifinals. The home team has won all the games thus far. Jermaine O'Neal with 13 now and matching the biggest lead for Indiana. Well, this game following the pattern for the Miami Heat on the road is Wade has his shot blocked by our test. And a timeout was called. And for Miami, their pattern has been slow starts. It wasn't that slow in this game. And then they fall way behind and rally and come up short. There was the jump ball call right here. Guarded by Sherrod Butler. And there is Bender for three. O'Neal on the weak side to first. And a foul. Jermaine O'Neal, who now has 15 points. And the Pacers are up by 16. But Jermaine O'Neal, as you see, he's right there to gobble up the offensive board. And that's just pure strength right there. And don't be late. I'm going to lose that one again. <laughs> This is where Jermaine O'Neal is tough, though, and that's what's getting a reference to. Uh, when he faces up, it is very difficult for a guy his size to guard him with him have the lateral movement. And you know, you know Jermaine's feeling it when he's running back down the floor shaking his head like that, like nobody can guard me. And he's right right now. They have had leads as high as 23 in this game, and in their two home wins prior to this, they also led by 22 and 23, respectively. And again, the 20-point lead thanks to Jermaine O'Neal, who has 20. Well, and you can see that by the body signs that the bench is one of the players. These guys are taking this game serious. They're in the playoffs. They don't feel they're anybody's guest. They want to win this thing, and they think they can. Meanwhile, Jermaine O'Neal, remember the foul trouble early? I think everyone's forgotten that. He has 22 points now, Rex. I think so. He's a beautiful player. He, he's worked so hard on his game. It's so good to see a guy work like that and be rewarded because he came in he came into this league at such a young age. That's eight turnovers in 19 trips down court. That's not a good ratio. Jones against O'Neal looking for a foul, didn't get it. Odom hit a couple of free throws while Jim and Scotty were talking and they had the lead back. The Heat does by one. O'Neal inside. Tinsley has to push one with three on the shot clock. That's not the shot they were looking at to open up the quarter. Jermaine O'Neal was posting in the three-point line in the corner. I mean, two different styles right now on the offensive end. Miami, every time they come up, two or three or four players are touching the basketball. Indiana, it's stop and post. The drought ends by O'Neal there as he goes down in the low block and scores. Well, a few times, Jermaine O'Neal has been able to establish good low post position there. A great pass is able to turn and take it to the rack. Well, you start taking shots like that when you get tired and you're worn down. Lob underneath on test off O'Neal's pass. And it, takes all the, it takes all the pressure off the defense when you start firing outside jumpers. And you see there, Indiana running their pick and roll to perfection is that our test with the dunk on the lob. Jones over Tinsley. And O'Neal with a big time rebound. Indiana's doing the little things. They're rebounding the basketball. They're moving their feet defensively. And this is the type of stand you need if you think you're going to be an NBA champion. You've got to show your medal sometime, no matter who you're playing on the road. Here's a steal by Wade. The tired pass by Artep. Butler strong, pinned by O'Neal. That's a superstar play, but he's hurt. O'Neal went down hard right at the baseline after blocking that shot. And remember, he's been suffering from back spasms, and landing like that is not going to help you. Exactly a minute left. Jermaine O'Neal is... Got popped in the face. Yeah, that could be it. He looks look like he can get his left eye open. So it may be more than the back. It might be in the eye that he took it and is trying to shake the cobwebs a little bit.
Reggie Miller over there to try to have a look and now kind of wave everybody off. Yeah. 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 Send him to his neutral corner. Yeah, the left eye is having trouble opening right now. What a great job of getting over there and rejecting that dunk by Karan Butler. He still can't get his eye open. Well, that's where you got to take a chance. You forget about all the hype getting about getting dunked on. You got to protect the basket. Karan Butler's going in there with some purpose. There's the left hand. Right in the eye. Yeah, he just got the left hand of Karan Butler. Uh, got but him in the eye. Butler's doing anything he can to get that ball in the rim. Ooh. Just take that. Yeah, that's not the kind of facial you want. But that was a great play by Jermaine O'Neal. He came all the way from the top of the key, all the way down the lane to get there to block that shot. Biggest block shot of the ball game, without a doubt. Now the question will be after the timeout if Jermaine O'Neal's going to be able. Oh, well, he's heading to the locker room. I was just going to say whether or not he's going to be able to come out. He's going the other way. Our guest trying to tie his case. Career high, but he missed it. Out of bounds to Miami. They still have life. They're down three, and everybody's looking at number three. Well, number three's out of the game, and I have no uh, idea why. That's what I mean. Alston's in, though, and he's a great three-point shooter, or has been this year. He lofts it, and misses it, and Reggie Miller throws it in the air, and Indiana has closed out the heat. And immediately, you've never heard 20,000 people more quiet because, boy, the Pacers know that they had their hands full. They got everything from Miami that they could have expected and then some. What a great series, really a great series. Uh, the Heat have nothing to be ashamed about here. They've done a fantastic job in this series. Even though it's going to say 4-2 in the final standings, it was a lot closer than that. Let's check in with Jim Gray. All right, Brad, thank you very much. Jermaine, what happened to your eye and what caused you to come back into the game? Just wanted to win, you know. I can't really see. You know, I, I looked at, I just happened to look up at the score and we're down two. I just wanted to get what I can give, you know. I try to get some, you know, block some shots, get some rebounds. But that's more important to me right now than my eye. You think there's damage there? I hope not. I hope not. You know, it's, it's something I got to deal with now. I just wanted to get a win, get to these conference finals. Talk to us if you can about this series. Did Miami give you more than you had expected? Those guys have a lot of heart. You know, they play extremely hard. Coach Van Gundy, um, Pat Riley, uh, really prepared these guys. You know, those guys are really a team to, to reckon with, to reckon with. You know, for the rest of the, you know, for the next five, ten years. You know, uh, you know it, it, the first two games got off to where we want, and then those guys stormed back. This is a well, it's a well played series. Those guys play extremely hard. You got to tip your hats off to them. And I hope that we can get further. Jermaine, congratulations to you. We hope you feel better. Thank you. What up, Asia? All right, back to you, Brett. Well, the Indiana Pacers were in for the fight of their life. They had the best regular season record. They go up against the Miami Heat, and they gave them more heat than they expected. But Indiana survives to win it. Four games to two. The fans in Conseco Fieldhouse saw more regular season victories than any other team in the Eastern Conference this year. Playoff-wise, same story. Seven straight. But now, it's time for the Eastern Conference Finals, and in come the Detroit Pistons. The Indiana Pacers, the two-time All-Star, the NBA Defensive Player of the Year, the veteran with the fire and determination of his younger self, and the leader coaching against his former team. The Detroit Pistons, their offensive machine, their defensive tandem, and the Hall of Fame coach on a mission. Tonight, the two best in the East begin their battle. The prize, a chance to play for an NBA championship. It's the Pistons and the Pacers, game one, next. This is basketball country. In Indianapolis at Conseco Fieldhouse, it is game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. It's the Detroit Pistons and the Indiana Pacers. 
sold out crowd at full throat already. Yeah, they really are. I mean, this team is well put together. You start with the center spot in Jermaine O'Neal. He's the key to this basketball team. He anchors their defense, and you can go to him down on the post on offense, and he's always key for this team. Starting at one forward, number seven, Jermaine O'Neal. Kind of a Carolina blue golf shirt on. It worked pretty well. In our last series, I think that's pretty much what he has on tonight. O'Neal on the baseline. Jermaine O'Neal. He's got 11 points. It's an 11-2 run right now. That just got stopped by Jermaine O'Neal. They've got to get Jermaine O'Neal more involved right Yeah, now, they though. really do. They really do because most of his touches have come on out the thoughts. Here's Tinsley back in at the point. Reggie Miller's back in there. O'Neal, Harrington, and Artest. Jermaine O'Neal, Rasheed Wallace trying to stay with him, and O'Neal on a fadeaway knocks it down, and a little collision inside. You never saw these teams average 80 points, so we're a little bit ahead of pace. Our test for the lead. O'Neal keeps it alive, and the Pacers do lead. You know, I was watching Jermaine O'Neal come up the floor, and I was thinking, they got to get him involved somehow. Now, on this, he got involved himself by going up, getting the offensive rebound, and now he has a chance for a three-point play. But you look at the numbers. The Pacers are really struggling from the field, and they have the lead right now. That's just a brand-new Thursday tattoo. Don't worry about it. Going to cover it up. Don't need any oozing out here tonight. Here's Campbell blocked by O'Neal and out of bounds to the Pacers. Now, I think the zone defense has had a big effect on Rick because now he's not moving, he's standing still more, and it allows the Pacers to go. O'Neal has blocked the last two Ellen Campbell attempts. Detroit turns it over again. O'Neal, nice extra pass to Tinsley. The maturity of Jermaine O'Neal. It's not about the points for him anymore. It's about winning basketball games and making his teammates better. He knows he's going to be a 20 and 10 guy. That'll take care of itself. Phillips on our tests. That's a mismatch, but now he gets double team help from Hamilton. Five on the shot clock. Wide open Harrington. Tipped in by O'Neal. There he is on the low block. Against Wallace with a left hand, a great spin move. O'Neal against Wallace again. Different move, same effect. 19 for O'Neal. 66-65. Have to go up. Nope, he's going to give it up to Wallace. And he missed a three. And the Pacers at home win game one. Jermaine O'Neal, Wallace goes down as O'Neal goes baseline. He's become a much, much better outside shooter, but not in the early going of this one. O'Neal sends that one back from whence it came. Little different lineup out there right now for the Pacers. Johnson in there with Tinsley having two fouls. He's running the point. O'Neal, baseline jumper, got it. Six for O'Neal. And the so lead swells to eight. For a seven-foot player to do. Put the ball on the floor, going left, pull-up jump shot is a difficult shot for a big. Larry Brown is going to stay with the group that's playing well right now. And right now, that's his bench plus Rip Hamilton. Artest missed a three, but Foster with the offensive rebound gets it back to Artest. Now O'Neal is fouled and won. And that's three on Campbell. See, and Campbell has played terrific. And now Larry Brown has to make a decision. Again, this is just like a turnover, a second shot, and now a three-point possibility. Jermaine O'Neal, eight points to lead the Pacers in scoring right now. And he talked that one in. Chance for the Pacers to regain the lead. 
O'Neal's open. Boy, he worked inside. He knew where he wanted to go, didn't he? He's the best player in this half. There's the bench. And it's all Okur with nine. O'Neal takes everybody with it. It's rare that you will see a piston late in recovery. But here it is. Okur shows Kayshawn Prince had his back to the play and reacted late. See, Prince was supposed to be there, got there late because he didn't see the ball. You must see the ball when you're playing defense from the weak side. Jermaine O'Neal to try to cap off the three-point play, which would be his second of this half. Does. 14 for Jermaine. And it's the Pacers back in front by Deuce. A few minutes ago. Johnson leaves it for O'Neal. Off the glass, Jermaine O'Neal has 16 first half points. As you'd expect, he got them both. Two point game, 45 left. Hamilton trying to get free of Miller on the baseline. Gave it right back to Wallace. O'Neal blocked it. Under a minute in the quarter. Great quarter for Detroit. A terrible one again for the Pacers. O'Neal draws a double team. Works baseline. That's his shot. Well, that's one of many, but that's a good one. Pistons have been scoreless this quarter as the bench of Indiana has helped the cause here. O'Neal back in the lineup, and he scores. As he comes back in and has his 10th point, and now it's a 7-point ball game. Reggie Miller is back in the lineup. He has yet to take a shot tonight. O'Neal, quick move across the lane. Got his own miss and made sure the second time. See, he looks good. He's getting the ball deep right on the post. And even when he doesn't get it deep, he takes it deep. He is causing a problem right now for the Detroit defense. But right now, he's the only guy causing a problem. A party for all the folks there with a lot of fun. I'm sure they'll have it again this summer. Hensley. O'Neal with a left hand. Oh, now that's strong. The Pacers are doing a lot of pacing, not they, a lot of really running. Are. They really are, Brad. O'Neal, Reggie for three. Got it. And they do. Jermaine O'Neal, 17 points, and it's down to six. The lead's back to 12. Jermaine O'Neal, he'll have a chance for a three-point play. He got so used to trying to not look over at Tuffy Smith, he's got the same problem going with Larry Brown. So Jermaine O'Neal with 22 points to lead the way for the Pacers. Tayshawn Prince spin baseline last time on Reggie Miller on this move. This time, same move. Didn't score it. And didn't draw the foul either. O'Neal dumps it down to Tinsley. The extra bounce, and he puts it in. Jermaine O'Neal fronting Rasheed Wallace. Tough catch on the baseline. They work it around the perimeter. Prince finds Ben Wallace. Blocked by O'Neal. Tinsley. Tip in and a slam by O'Neal. This is the best I've seen the Pacers look as a team since game one. Every other day, so don't forget, we'll be back with you on Sunday from Indianapolis. Tinsley with a left hand. Nice move, didn't finish. O'Neal will. When you look right here, you don't even see Rashid in the picture. You know why? Because Brogier is standing behind the three right. somewhere. From his hometown, Queensbridge, 59th and 
from the bridge back in Queens, and he said, those all of his old guys, he says, it's really relaxed me. Now I'm ready to play the ball game. <laughs> so he went from Brad Pitt to the boys in the hood, huh? Wow. Yes, he did. O'Neal blocked that shot, and Harrington is fouled. And Jermaine is still down on the other end of the court. Right. He's leaving. Yeah, he's leaving. He's going to the locker room. Yeah. He blocked the shot, didn't run down the court with the rest of his teammates, and he's heading to the Pacers locker room. Boy, this would be a huge, huge blow for the Indiana Pacers' chances, not only in this game, but in this series. Pacers haven't had a rebound this quarter. They do now. Our test again. Kinsley hooks it around to O'Neal. He'll take the 18-footer and got it. Well, that'll be something to rest his mind a little bit, hitting his first shot of the quarter. Some more harsh words from Larry Brown telling him, we've got to move the ball. We can't just throw it and stand around. You've got to get it going. You're not going to do it by yourselves. You're, we're getting exposed by ourselves. And again, turning it over there. Our test. Guarded by Tayshaun Prince. The pick and roll to O'Neal. Jermaine O'Neal, and he's feeling better with every shot, I think. When you're looking at Jermaine O'Neal, he, he just takes shots now. You know, you remember when he first got injured, he was kind of hesitant. Now he has that swagger yep. back. You could see it with a look on his face after that shot. Kind of looked at the crowd. Rasheed Wallace, O'Neal blocked it. Billups and Artest. Trying to play for the loose ball, and they got Chauncey Billups in the gut, and that's Ron's second in the last 30 seconds. Yeah, but what a great block. You know, right when you start feeling good about yourself, then you get excited. O'Neal is starting to play again. It's good to see. And Jermaine O'Neal just ended it. He caught the ball on the post where he likes it. It's a matter of feet. When he catches that two or three feet further out, he doesn't score. When he catches it deep, he's tough to stop. The look of a team that won uh, NBA best 61 games in the regular season. And as Doc said, the questions have been answered and the swagger is back. Pacers win it easily. 83 to 68 is the final. And let's check in with Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Brad, with Jermaine O'Neal. Jermaine, you told me at halftime, this is our season. I'll worry about my knee after the game. How is your knee? Uh, it's pretty sore right now. Uh, obviously, right now, I feel a lot better uh, you know, about my knee because we won. You know, I just, uh, the team came out and played the way we normally play, you know, what we played the entire season. We didn't really worry about making shots. And when you don't worry about making shots, things happen. So I, I got to say hi to my, my daughter, Asia, and Misha out of Cancun right now. I told them we was going to win this game for them. This team has always talked about as being so young. Did you guys take a major step and grow up tonight? Sometimes, you know, when you when you're down, it brings a team together. You know, like I told you, I told you yesterday, I didn't have any more save the world speeches. You know, just us coming out, playing together, being a family, uh, just playing basketball, having fun. And you know, Coach Carl Lyles came in and gave a speech before the before the uh, tip off, and he just told us, you know, we're not gonna go over any more things on the board. We just gotta go out and play and have fun. And we did today. Did Austin Crozier change the complexion of this series? He was big for us tonight. You know, he spreads the defense. Uh, he, he keeps Rashid away or either been away from the goal and, and allow guys to go one-on-one -on -one with me. All right, congratulations, Jermaine. We'll see you Sunday night. Thank you. All right, back to you, Brad. All right, Jim, thanks. Jermaine O'Neal, a big night. Played 38 minutes on a bad knee. It'll be more sore tomorrow. But as he said, it feels pretty good now because we won by 15 points. Lowest point total for the Pistons so far in the playoffs. Only 68 on their home floor tonight. Nice look by Ben Wallace, but the shot is blocked. Jermaine O'Neal against Ben Wallace. Up and over it. Crozier spots up three. Not this time. O'Neal, though, keeps it alive. O'Neal asking for it. Gets it and goes strong and got it. And leaves Ben Wallace in his wake. O'Neal will try to change that against Rasheed Wallace from the elbow. Yes. 
six for Jermaine. I tell you, he looks great. Down to eight minutes remaining in the half. Still, the Pistons in front. Pacers looking for some offense. Let's see if O'Neal can get it to Jones. Outside for three for Fred Jones. 3.45 left in the half. And Detroit has led the whole way. Here's a block shot by O'Neal. And now to start the third quarter, see if the Pacers can draw first blood. O'Neal hasn't scored since the first quarter, but he does there. Rasheed Wallace got into this one early. Jermaine O'Neal strips it from him on the baseline. Jones is at his best game. O'Neal works against Rasheed Wallace. You know, it's interesting, Brad. They charted rich shots in game five, and they thought over half his shots came off of nine plays other than plays for him. Jermaine O'Neal knocks down the jumper to give the Pacers a three-point advantage. Wallace in low again. This time, he misses again. Uh, we might have to think about that right now. <laughs> Jermaine O'Neal trying to back in Rasheed Wallace. I like he it. scores. I like it. You go out of a timeout, you come out, and you give it to your guy. That was a shot for Chauncey Phillips, but he didn't want to take it because he knew if he missed it, what would happen? O'Neal gives it up. Artest will try a triple, and he knocks it down. Johnson gives it back. O'Neal from 17. And Jermaine O'Neal with six points. Rip Hamilton on the inbound, trying to find some space and room, and he can't. Boy, he hit the ground hard. Artest will try to back Hamilton down. Reggie will try it again for three. And again, he's way long. And again, Tayshaun Prince is flying at him. Jermaine O'Neal, top of the circle, and he knocks it home. Our test draws the double team. O'Neal over Rasheed Wallace. Now that's a tough wow. shot. Ten for Jermaine. Also, you played the Lakers twice in the finals as a big underdog. So you know what it's like to beat them. You beat them once of two times. Can either of these two teams beat the Lakers? O'Neal knocks it down. Boy, he loves those elbows. Yes, he does. I mean, that's the place he's made shot. High pick and roll, elbow jump shot, and on the post. Those are his two areas. Pistons have their starting five on the floor. Johnson, he's been tough tonight. He leaves it for O'Neal, and he scores. Just as Doc called it, Jermaine O'Neal cuts it to two. He has to be your guy. But is it slipping away for the Pacers right now on the road? They're trying to force game seven back home on Thursday. O'Neal over Wallace, scoring.